Hi, good evening to all. I welcome you all to AIMS HRC webinar. It is the uh, one on the presentation skills for job interviews. Today, we are going to highlight the set agenda points on importance of presentation skills for job interviews and also necessary soft skills, which generally help you to give a effective presentation in the interviews and tips and some other guidelines. At the end, we'll also do after the break a small demo based on any interested candidate to understand how they can present themselves based on their technical soft skills as well. So today I would like to uh, welcome Ms. Fajana and she's uh, having excellent qualifications in English as MA English and also she has done excellent certifications. Today I would like to request present Fajana to continue the first part of the presentation and uh, welcome you all once again and keep everyone your system. Thank you so much, Sir Ramesh. Good evening, everyone. So glad to have all my viewers today. I am always happy when I come for uh, the webinar specifically for AIMS HREs because the vision we have is to empower all the professionals that we have around the globe. And it's, it's wonderful, right, to collaborate and talk about things that we know, but at times we are just uh, revamping through them and we just refresh our brains. So once again, thank you so much, Sir Ramesh, for that wonderful welcome. And thank you, everyone, for joining on time. I warmly welcome all of you to our presentation skills for job interviews webinar. Let's get started. The agenda for today's session, as discussed, is going to be to discuss the importance of presentation skills. Why do we need to focus on our presentation skills, first of all? And from there, we will look at the soft skills that are required and how can you showcase the soft skills during your interview. Just having the soft skills is not enough. We should be able to demonstrate it. Thirdly, we will look at the tips and guidelines to get our 100% success in the interview. And finally, we will close out with whatever demo we can do with all of you. Otherwise, any video demo that we can demonstrate for all of you. So the first topic for today, importance of presentation skills. Well, the vacancy is there. You have applied for it. The job is there. The CV is gone. Probably the interviewer is impressed by your resume. He gives you a call again for an interview. But why do we need an interview when we have already given all the information in our resume and our covering letter? Well, when the interviewer calls you to their office, to their room, they want to see more things than what is present in your two-page resume or covering letter. They want to see more of what you can offer. Let me tell you a story. A very dear friend of mine, she was getting interviewed for a very basic front office kind of a job. After she reached at the venue, she was told to wait. Okay, we are all uh, you know aware of that. We have always been asked to wait. But she waited for one hour. She waited for one hour. During that one hour, she sat in their lobby. She sat in their room. There were some magazines kept over there. Probably she, she read some of them. She kept it back. After one hour, she had the interview, but it lasted only for like 15 minutes. It was an average interview. She did not have very high hope, but she got the job. Later on, when she became slightly friends with the hiring team, she casually asked them, you know, what, what was good about my interview? I don't think I performed very well. And you know what they said? It seems the magazines or whatever brochures were kept on the lobby in the table, it was scattered. Okay, so the magazines and the brochures which were kept on the lobby table were scattered. When she took them to read, she kept it back properly. She did not do anything else. She just kept the scattered magazine back properly. And that is when she understood that they were observing her right from the moment she arrived at the office. That is why presentation skills matter. 
the expertise is there you showcase your skills and competencies in your resume but the interviewer now wants to see it in action what can you do when you are given xyz situation are you creative enough what is like your uh, attention towards the things around you are you only focused about yourself or are you aware of your surroundings they also want to check your interpersonal skills right a combination of everything people skills how are you in time management how do you talk to people how do you interact do you have a smile are you good enough for the company they also want to see how are you going to handle conflicts if any and of course your resourcefulness when you miss your two pointers how are you going to stand up when they ask you about your leadership role how are you going to tell them when they ask you about your five year plan what will you tell them so it is exactly to see what is beyond the resume that you are called for the interview so don't buy heart your inter your resume and go for the interview they don't need that they need something more and the employers are searching for candidates who will stand out at any point of time who will stand out from the rest of the crowd because there can be people with your same qualification with your same experience probably same certifications also but how do you stand out from them they also want to see your knowledge but also how you put that knowledge into use just having the knowledge of a b c d is not enough you should be able to tell a with apple and also a with another big word like aristocrat so how do you put your knowledge into use of course they need unique qualities everyone needs unique qualities and all of you everyone who has gathered here has unique qualities but do you know how to demonstrate this that is what we are looking for when we talk about presenting yourself in the job interview and finally your aptitude and your attitude well the aptitude that is your knowledge it can get you till the door of your interviewer you know it can give you that interview call but the job confirmation will come only with the right attitude so what happens after you enter that door your attitude determines you are your own ambassador or you are the ceo of your career now you must have seen there are ambassadors for you know big companies like jewelry companies some paint companies interior designers and all that what do these ambassadors do they stand up and advocate for their company they wear their clothes if it's a fashion brand they wear its jewelry if it's a jewelry brand or suppose if it's an internal designing company they will have all those fantastic features and they will literally advocate for that particular brand for that particular company well over here at the interview board you are your own ambassador you take control you are the ceo no one is going to brand yourself or talk about yourself as much as you can so it is not just about your knowledge your experience but also about the core values that you have let me give you a very small example of how you can be your own ambassador okay so suppose you have a question related to sustainability we we see that quite often now in the construction industry and otherwise also some question in the interview related to sustainability how do you answer that well you can start off by saying that i myself am a very conscious user of plastic then you come down to whatever the answer for that particular question is so advocating your values along with the interview answer will make you stand out and that will show you as a brand ambassador but for yourself you are showcasing your values your credibility what you believe in so what should you consider while you are presenting yourself in the interview right so you have arrived there you are in front of the hiring team and now the actual game begins well first of all consider the time and the length as in 
if you are asked a question about introducing yourself, you shouldn't be taking more than two or three minutes. But if they ask you a technical question about how you resolve the particular issue, probably you can take a little more time. But make sure the hiring manager probably has another 10 to 12 interviews on the same day. Try to decode their face, facial expressions. You know, what are they doing with their hand? Are they interested? Are they bored? What can you bring in? And what should you actually tell them in that specified time? Number two, when you are presenting yourself, be very conscious about your appearance. Well, I come out for this webinar, I can wear whatever I want, but I have chosen a professional attire even if I am working from my house, right? Because it showcases your professionalism, your enthusiasm. So be mindful of your appearance and of course have the etiquette. The telling of thank you, may I, please, sorry, shaking of hands. Be very conscious about all of these things when you're presenting yourself. Thirdly, be careful about the organizational objectives. So have a research done according to the mission and vision of the company that you are interviewing for. Wherever possible, adjust and tweak their mission and vision into your answer. Let me take the example of sustainability again. Suppose you are interviewing for a company who places sustainability on a very high demand. So when you are answering certain questions, not all, only certain relevant questions, you can put forward the idea that you are also aware of the sustainability practices and issues, right? Suppose they are talking about one change that you have brought in the office. You can tell that you kept a simple signboard of switch on the oven after use. But that shows that you are worried about the environment and that aligns with the mission and vision of the company you are interviewing for. So present the organizational objectives along with the answers. Number four, your verbal and non-verbal signals. Communication, of course, important. Be very careful about whatever comes out of your mouth. Be careful about your non-verbal gestures also. We will talk about some body language tips. Number five, consider who your audience is. Suppose you're talking to only one, one specific hiring manager. You know, you have only one HR person. You don't have to be very loud to them. It can be a very soft-spoken conversation. Maybe it's a very small office. They also have someone else working near them. So don't scream and shout. Be very polite. Know that the other person also is trying to do their work and be conscious of that one particular person. Your conversation has to be heard only to that particular person. But in case there is a huge team that is there, four or five people present for the interview board, then you can adjust your voice and your hand gestures accordingly. Make sure you look at all of them, not just one person all the time, but all of them throughout the time of your interview. There can also be situations where you have a group discussion, you know, before uh, the actual interview, they use the tool of group discussion to filter out the best candidates. Over there, you can be slightly more loud and assertive, not aggressive, okay, not aggressive, don't shout and scream. Everyone needs a fair chance, but you can be assertive, be strong with your point and make sure everyone is hearing you. So don't overlap any conversations, but make sure everyone hears what you have to say. So consider your audience as well whenever you are presenting. Finally, the visual aids. That also depends on the type of interview you are attending. If it's a regular interview, have your certificates, your resume and whatever you can have. If it's a presentation interview wherein you have to make a presentation, make sure you use appropriate tools to showcase your strength, your weakness or anything that they have asked for. Now let's talk about soft skills, the second subtopic for today. 
necessary soft skills to give a good first impression in an interview. Well, let me put a disclaimer first. The soft skills will not come on the day of the interview. You cannot read a 200-page book and buy heart soft skills and go and present yourself. That will never work out. The soft skills should be made a part of your daily routine, specifically your work routine, your nine to six, the job that you are attending. It should become a habit. Otherwise, it will come out as superficial. So for today's webinar, we will discuss four soft skills and how you can demonstrate them. But please note that there are more soft skills which you should search and find out to align with your job role. If you are uh, applying for a leadership role, then probably team working is also a soft skill. So industry specific soft skill, that's up to you. You have to do the research. But let me try to tell you what can we do regarding the four soft skills stated here. Number one, number one is communication. Communication should be effective as in both your verbal and non-verbal communication skills. So you should hear what you are speaking. You should know what you have to talk about. You have to know what your conversation is going to be like. So what do we do for communication skills? You rehearse and practice some answers beforehand. Interview point of view, you can re previously review some questions and practice your answers. But the basic communication skill of talking with humility and in the correct pace, that will come with practice throughout your work life. That will not come in one day. So all the soft skills mentioned over here, they will have two phases. One, the interview point of view, two, your entire professional life. You can have a hundred things on your mind. Probably you have resolved over 20 problems in your office. But if you cannot communicate that properly when the interviewer asks you about it, then what is the purpose? So there is a very famous uh, communication coach who has said that you are only as good as you can communicate. If you can present your ideas well, then it becomes effective. Otherwise, it does not give a good very impression. The next one is professionalism. Have a professional outlook. So not just your attire, the way you speak, the way you address, the way you look, the way you write, the way you carry yourself should be professional. Now, this also takes into account the relationship you have with people in and around your office. How are you talking to the, uh, the helper that is there? How are you talking to the receptionist? How do you talk to your line manager? Are you partial? Do you show uh, two standards when you are talking with two different set of people? No. Your work ethics matter. Your appearance matter. Your humility matters. And then we have the topic of confidence. Being confident about whatever you are going to tell, whatever you are going to present. So how do you demonstrate confidence? Well, confidence comes again with practice and knowledge. Confidence without knowledge will be self-boasting. It will not come out very well. So if you have the knowledge, know how to communicate it. If you learn how, how to communicate it well, you will be confident no matter what the situation is. Not just the interview, no matter what the situation is. So we can see that these soft skills are connected with each other also. They come together. Communication cannot function as one. Communication comes in hand with confidence and then you demonstrate your professionalism and then you show that you are adaptable. You can adapt to this office. You can adapt to any situation. Being flexible, having the ability to handle any situation. Again, let me give you one example. Suppose you came in expecting a specific hiring manager and then the receptionist comes and tells you, no, we don't have that person. Instead, your senior management or even maybe your CEO, CEO is going to interview you. Are you going to get worried? Are you going to be calm? Can you adapt for the situation? 
because you have all, you are already arrived you, you there is no scope of going back you have to be adaptable flexible and go there so i repeat the soft skills which we have discussed are only the basic ones anything which is relevant to the industry you have to demonstrate it via the questions so if they ask you about your leadership techniques you have to tell them examples of how you demonstrated your leadership skills so our previous webinar for which you can find the youtube link also that focuses on how you can answer some some questions and what are some questions you can ask to the interviewer so i recommend you have a look there as well so how do we demonstrate these soft skills in the interview right you are there presentable you are good you have arrived on time everything is there but now showcasing the soft skills we said already it is not just about knowledge just knowledge does not work so the first tip i would like to give you is to be confident and enthusiastic make the hr feel that you are interested in this role you are not hunting for 100 things you have genuinely come here because this role this company this office excites you you have to show them that enthusiasm don't rush through your information again communication and confidence comes there practice your information beforehand some questions can be practiced so know your answers and try to give them the most relevant information talking about your 10th and plus 1 plus 2 marks your 11th 12th grades may not be necessary but talking about your first rank in your civil engineering maybe that is important so state only what is important to that particular question and situation number 3 follow a balanced pace that will demonstrate that you are a very composed person and you know how to handle the situation neither be too fast neither be too loud neither be too slow a balanced pace taking your time thinking about things and then giving an answer number 4 practice your soft skills so the soft skills will not come to you 9 o'clock sharp morning when you attend your interview that that's not the time to gain communication confidence and adaptability no it doesn't work like that you have to prepare beforehand how do you prepare you practice it in your daily routine and that will exactly come forward when you meet with senior people arrive early and settle down at the interview maybe you are also hired just because you kept the magazines properly you, you never know right uh, how people judge you and what are the ways of observation we, we cannot predict that so arrive early settle down have your little breathing exercise the water and everything and be present be actually present in the interview or the lobby room finally adapt and adopt so initially i spoke to you about attitude and aptitude now we have adapt and adopt how do you adapt to a situation the example i told you x person is not there this person is going to interview you are you going to be scared are you going to run away or will you be there and follow it through suppose a situational question they ask you you have not been there but there is another similar situation where you have already have an experience in take out that situation change your answer a little bit tweak your answer give it there for any new new questions that you have not practiced make sure you give a new strategy and showcase transferable skills so they ask you about a leadership role maybe directly you have not given a leadership kind of a position but you can tell your employer or your hr interviewer that you have guided your colleague through xyz elements when they came new to the office that is you taking a leadership that is how you are willing to help people so always highlight your transferable skills a skill which is there in one side but can be also used in the other so that will show that you are ready for everything see no one is 100% no one goes to the interview board with 
everything. You know, you cannot be 10 on 10, but you can be 9 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 and show that you are willing to move towards the other one or two. The rest two marks, I am ready to work for it. That can be demonstrated. That is why soft skills are important. So how to give a good first impression? The first pointer, the golden rule, your interview starts before you have arrived. The moment you step inside, even when you answer that phone call, accepting the interview request, your interview has begun. Turn your phone off and put it away. We, we have a habit of putting it in the airplane mode or maybe just putting the phone on silent. What happens is if the wait time is longer, we have a tendency to check our phone for any update, to check if the Wi-Fi wi is available, any call from the office or maybe just to you know play a game. So to avoid such tendencies, I would highly recommend you just don't take your phone. You just keep it away in the car or in your bag and don't take it till you have finished your interview. Number three, bring relevant information. Whatever is required, please carry along with you. Your resume, your certificates, your visa, whatever is valid and required, please carry it along. Don't be in a situation where you tell them, oh, I, I don't have it with me. Can, can I get a copy or things like that? Don't do that. Bring relevant information in terms of your answers also. So practice some questions beforehand and give them exactly what they need. Don't beat around the bush. The next one, greet the interviewer with a firm handshake. That's a very good uh, first impression that you can make. Not to have a very, uh, very hard uh, handshake or a longer one, a short, quick and firm handshake. But over here in this part of the world, I would also recommend you wait for the HR to give the hand first. Some people are not very comfortable with the handshake. There are other ways to show your respect. So you can keep a hand on your chest or just, you know, show a good morning with a head note. You can do those kind of things. The next pointer is to speak clearly and stop for the breath. Don't give everything just like that, like a random flood you have. No. That is why rehearsing is important. If you can rehearse your answers, you know exactly what to speak and you will be clear. Your education, your experience, X, Y, Z, done. And make sure the HR can hear you. Next one, be honest and polite. See, the HR team uh, maybe listens to people, 10, 20 people in one day. So they know what kind of people come in, what kind of questions to ask. They are good at their job. That is why they are sitting over there, right? So do not fabricate or tell anything that will not give a very high opinion about you, okay? So for example, you're not supposed to talk about your previous company, why you left it, why you want to change the job, et cetera, et cetera. Instead, be honest and clear with your answers and also be polite. No matter what the age of the HR team is, we have many young people coming in now. So don't worry about the age or how do they look. You be honest, you be polite. That also matters to the answers that you are giving. You don't have a leadership kind of a situation, uh, an experience. Tell them, oh no, I'm extremely sorry. I have not been very lucky to have a leadership role. But I have done X, Y, Z, right? So you transfer that question to something else that you have already taken charge of. Next is to ask for clarification, if any. If the question is not clear, if you want some help, don't hesitate. Go and ask for that particular clarification. In case you want the question to be repeated, ask for a repetition. In case you need a moment to think about the answer, be honest. Can I take a moment to think about this answer? No problem. Provide answer to all questions. So no matter even if you take time, but provide the answer. That is more important. Now suppose there is a question for which you really have no idea. You know, you, you are thinking hard, but you cannot think about any answer, any situation. Well, you can tell them that you will come back to that, okay? 
Ma'am, just give me some days. I will come back to uh, come back to it with a clear answer. You can tell them something and then come back. Write the, uh, an email or a letter to the HR. Introduce yourself. Your name is XYZ. We had an interview on this date. I was not able to give an answer for this particular element, but I have done my study now. I think this is going to be my way forward if that particular situation arrives. That again is not a second, uh, no, it's, it comes off as a second meeting, but it gives a good impression about you. Like, you know, someone has been so honest and careful to come back. Come back the next day, the third day, but with an answer. It shows your genuine interest. Those are little things which go unnoticed, but the HR is probably impressed by you. Finally, whenever they ask you if, they, if you have a question for them, for the hiring team, for the company, always say yes. At least you can ask, when can I expect a call back, okay? But then again, we had the, another webinar where we discussed at length what are the kind of questions you can ask the interviewer. So please have a look at that. So always ask some question to the interviewer. Don't say, no, I don't have anything to ask. I'm all fine. Just, just give me this job. No, don't come out like that. Be confident and ask at least one question which is relevant to your industry. So the next slide is about telephone and video interview. So when we are talking about presenting ourselves, the face-to-face -face interview matters. Of course, we can have a telephone or a video interview also. So let us look at what are the things we can be careful about when we have these kind of interviews. So the first one is a telephone interview. The first thing, which I'm very not sure how many people know, when you smile, when you talk with interest, no matter even if my face is covered, you can genuinely feel that. You can feel what the other person is trying to tell you. So you can give your regular smile, use hand gestures, even if it is a telephone interview. I would also recommend you to dress appropriately. Maybe not the entire blazer and tie and all that, but at least don't be in your night suits or in a, in a dress code which makes you comfortable, you know, which brings you into the home zone. So don't be in the home zone. Come to the interview zone and get actually prepared for the interview. That dressing up will bring you down into the right frame of mind. You know, it will bring you down into the actual position. Number three, make sure your device is full of charge. Maybe you're using headphones. Now we have these wireless headphones. They go out of charge most of the time. So make sure that everything is fully charged and they are working. You know, they are properly working. And also make sure you are in a quiet location. No disturbances, uh, no family members running around. Make sure you are fully focused, just like a regular interview. One advantage of a telephone interview is that you can have your, you know, the basic chits and uh, things that you need for answers. So keep all those in front, but don't give them the feeling that you are just reading out something. Okay, so just like you read a story, don't read it out, bring in some human elements and then try to give answers. For the video interview as well, test your equipment, see if the Zoom, Skype or the Teams is working, see if your Wi-Fi is strong enough. Uh, we would suggest not to use a, use a mobile phone or a tab, use your proper laptop for the interview, that will be the best. And you should also be careful to adjust your lighting. So, you know, it should be reflected onto your face, your face should be bright enough, it shouldn't be darkened. And make sure the background is clear. We, we always overlook that fact. You know, the, the random wall is also fine, but make sure it is clear and you don't have any clothes hanging in, the chair and the bed coming up. And, you know, make sure it is clear. Suppose you have paintings and things like that in your wall. Make sure, again, that is appropriate. I will not take you, tell you to remove it, but make sure it is appropriate. For the video interview, of course, you have to dress up exactly like the face-to-face -face interview. There is no middle way. You cannot do the halfway through like the telephone interview. Be properly dressed and have a smile on your face. Okay, so show them interest and 
genuinely use hand gestures, not flowy hand gestures, okay? I was working in this part and then I went there and I come back to Dubai and I joined for five years and then two years again. So don't have these kind of distracting gestures. Be conscious about where your hands are going, how you can use them effectively. Be very focused about it. Finally, have your study notes. Again, your little chits, your answer sheets, your resume. But when they ask you about introducing yourself, don't say, my name is Farzana, I work at Ames, I'm in Dubai for five years, XYZ. So don't read it. But you can have certain bulleted list somewhere, a sticky note on the computer or just in front of you. That works. But don't give them the feeling that you are reading out from somewhere. So please be careful of these factors when we talk about presenting yourself in a telephone and video interview. So now the amazing body language tips that we should be careful about. The pictures are self-explanatory. So lean slightly forward. So leaning slightly forward gives the impression that you are interested, enthusiastic, you are eager to listen to what the HR wants to say, what the opposite person wants to tell you. Maintain a good posture. So don't be slouched down. Don't sit like this. If my video is clear, don't speak like this. Don't sit like this. Be very careful about your posture while you are sitting as well as when you are standing. In case you have any nervous habits like, you know, biting your tongue, scratching your head, doing like this, uh, tapping your legs or your fingers, whatever that is, control them. There is no way out. You have to learn to control them. How to control? Breathing exercises to be aware about the situation. There is one tip that I would like to share here. You get nervous when you are not familiar with the situation, okay? So the human brain has a habit of predicting certain things. So how can you predict your interview? Well, not the entire interview, but just two days before the interview, imagine yourself in random office rooms, how you are sitting, how you are walking in, how do you open the door, right? So bringing yourself consciously into a new atmosphere can help you calm yourself. That will reduce your nervous habits. Again, if you know the name of your interviewer, you can go to any social media, for example, LinkedIn, and have a look at their face. When you are familiar with the face, you have less tendency to get anxious. Okay? So have the anxiety and nervous, nervousness away. Try to get familiarized with the situation around you. The next point of my favorite, smile naturally. Try to smile as much as possible. Not laugh, not a grin, but smile as you would normally do. But that again, it's a soft skill and it's come, it comes with practice. You cannot smile 9 a.m. interview room, switch on, smile. That will not happen. You have to learn how to smile throughout your day, throughout your professional circle. The next pointer, offer a firm handshake. But I repeat, if the HR, HR person comes in first, that will be better because we live in this part of the world. Otherwise, it's okay, no problem. You can shake hands first. Gesture appropriately, not flowy movements, but firm and strict movements which are relevant. Don't show actions anywhere. First, I did civil engineering, then diploma, then master's. No, only show hand gestures wherever appropriate and then make eye contact so this happens with me okay uh, i i'm sorry to admit it on this platform but i'm very conscious about the uh, plans and you know the, these cute things that they might have around them you know maybe the room is well decorated there is a tendency for me to look at what is there in the room just because I am curious about these small miniature uh, decorations and things like that. But make sure you make eye contact only with the HR professional. Don't look at that table. There can be many confidential documents. Don't look at the files kept on the almaris on the 
uh, wardrobes behind in front of you don't do that but make sure you have the perfect eye contact with the hr manager or the person you are interviewing and stay firm with that you know don't stare at them but have a pleasant eye contact and finally don't sit like this don't have a closed body language that's what we say don't have a crossed arm crossed legs but be open humble and polite not just in your words but also in your body language so that will be from my end why presentation skills are important how can you demonstrate soft skills in your presentation for interviews i think sir ramesh over to you thank you so much bajana for presenting an excellent tips to the candidates you can stop the screen share thank you so much sir thank you very much i really happy to see all the attendees from across the middle east and also from india so aims hrc when we established we started delivering this type of a free webinars because end of the day after i mentored more than 6000 professionals across middle east and india i aspire to now to help the people on the jobs and also to enhance the skills of the professionals to meet the employer's expectations so now we need to as being every seven webinars what we conduct we spend always our time aims hrc webinars we designed such a way to provide not only this exposure and the skill set and apart from the practical industry tips why because in the industry today everyone want a good job best job your dream job but are you preparing to get into that job first of all do you know about you so that's why the tips whatever rajana explained earlier in nutshell when you go for a job you have to first research about the company and the industry trends what do you mean by the company as example like mr pradeep he is currently working with one of the contracting firm and he want to go get into the one of the nice pmc consultancy with a double salary possible highly possible it's not impossible is possible very important is basically so guys here how to prepare for that to get into preparation first of all industry needs in dubai and also in ksa and also in india and different countries the clients they want strong strong capable talented technically so knowledgeable persons from contracting firms clients if you are working as a strong contracts man contracts manager in the contracting firm clients they can take you as a commercial director because you are going to manage such professionals that to an encouragement to all the contracting firm professionals today in this industry don't stick to the morning one punch afternoon one lunch evening one punch always think about we have lot of work lot of work 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 it is part of life without work nobody can pay salaries for us but in a one week at least spend one hour time in the one week one hour time just question to yourself do you know what you are doing do you like this what you are doing or you do you dream about what you want to become but don't spend just like a frog in a well because frog in a well doesn't know what's there outside sometimes jump out that's called courage today i'm encouraging you to get a courage that courage should come into situation always think in one week at least one hour time what type of company today you are working what strengths that you have then what type of a dream company where you want to get in what type of skill set what they want how to check that you know in your company what you are doing then go to linkedin job offers for example if you want to go for mace company go to the mace linkedin page check the vacancies maybe you are a project manager they are expecting for a project director check that maybe another job post to senior project manager maybe another job post just senior engineer 
download all these job descriptions, put onto one word file, write it as your vision, your mission to understand what is the skill set they want it. Maybe qualification they want engineering or already you have engineering. They want 10 years of experience, you have 10 years of experience. But they want specific with consultancy background, they put as a five years experience. But you don't have. When you don't have, when you don't have, how you will get it? That's the logic you all have to learn. How to present yourself. How to present yourself from a common man to the extraordinary man. Because every industry professional, wherever you work in this today industry, your all experiences are functionally, rationally, analytically, professionally, strong experience. Never ever underestimate whatever experience today you are working. You all have functional experience. So that's why the trend of industry, if they want such a three senior project managers of the PMC company, maybe they may have a flexibility with one of the client. They want specifically contractor's background experience because a PMC in the consultancy, if they doesn't have experience with contracting firms, they don't know how to manage the projects. Maybe they, they might have studied double M, double M tech or maybe double MSc. Practical knowledge they may not have. Your practical knowledge, what you have, may be rightly fit in there. But unfortunately, since because of your state of mind, you never prepared from yourself by using the right technical, financial, commercial, legal, and various safety, sustainability aspects, what you do as a contracting from professional or also middle, middle stage consulting from a from professional, you need to grab it on your fingertips. Whatever you speak, or whatever you organize yourself in that one hour interview, you have to sell yourself to fit for the position what you want to apply. Just by research the company and industry trends, showcase your organizational and team knowledge and demonstrate growth mindset. Maybe in the current organization itself, there's a big growth. There are no need to look at the outside companies. Pay attention to in the interviews, your main, your body language. Also, the way you look at non-verbal communications. Yeah. Non-verbal communication means the way you dress up. For example, consulting company, maybe they are nicely sitting in the office, they don't need to go, for example, daily to the office site. As a contracting from professional, daily we do a lot of hard work. You cannot go wear suit and tie and also with helmet, you cannot go to the side, right? But job interviews, you should see that what type of trend they require. In case of a software engineer's jobs, they don't want suit and tie. But construction industry is still with the traditional type of requirements, recruiters. Even HR also, you can see 20, 30 years, they are in the same position. They have seen all the people with suit and ties, especially for senior positions. Then wear it. And second thing, when you want to get into the any type of royal and diplomatic and dignified jobs, that means highly paid jobs, that means senior professional jobs, you must and should be the happiest person. No company will take a sad person to put into the such a management position. That's why we should learn. How we can learn? Apply from tomorrow onwards. Daily check, sometimes if you are working with a contracting firm as a or middle management professional, sometimes you can see one of the CEO or the senior director of the company, how generally they come to the project sites. How do they behave? Are they speaking fast? Do they have a smile on their face? Sometimes we like, sometimes senior professionals, senior management professionals, because they look like bashing, admiring, Highly motivation type. Looks like a decent, diplomatic, dignified, royal look, right? And also they come in high rich cars, high paid salaries. You know the reason why? They smile. They smile. They apply common sense. Because a CEO of a company or a director of a company, 
He has to understand the strategic decisions of the company, what they taken in line with the vision and the missions of the companies. End of the day, that company should earn a minimum of that many millions in that year. So to get into that positions, we should first of all prepare yourself. Yeah. And any common or an ordinary person can become an extraordinary person. But very important is the practice, the preparation, the readiness. So the that's what you have to look at, how you can sell yourself in the interview. Great achievements what we did in the projects. Or maybe what are the excellent certifications? Or maybe studied MBA. What do you mean by MBA? Master of Business Administration. Is this MBA, did you study as an academic subjects or a realistic business subjects? That's why at any time, when you want to get into the job interviews, either through webcams or it can be through the any type of media or maybe face to face. Everyone, you should know your current ability to speak confidently. And nowadays, chart GPT is there for you to help to write it. But chart GPT cannot help you to speak in front of the paper and you cannot present yourself. That's why first you have to learn various interview skills, what Jana mentioned. First, get ready for interview. Maybe some of you might have already attended some couple of interviews, but you have to put one question to yourself. The question is very simple. Do you know about you? Yeah? Question number one, do you know about you? Question number two, do you like you? Do you like you? Question number three, do you have confidence in the appropriate presentation skills? Example, almost 30 minutes I'm speaking now. I'm using graphical communication. I'm also speaking verbal communication. Also, you can see my facial expressions. Of course, sometimes when I say smile, I should smile, right? If I keep my face like this, if I ask you to smile, you say, Brady Ramesh, you're not smiling. Smile is called non-verbal communication. That means in the same spot, in the last 30 minutes, I'm using my verbal, non-verbal, graphical, written communications in effective way, in concise and clear. Why? Because I prepared for that. Even for job interview also, you should always ready to prepare what you have written in the CV. What are the qualifications you studied? What type of experience that you have? And also that experience may be in the GCC countries plus home countries, maybe in other countries, geographically where you work. Then in that zones when you work, what type of experience that you attained and also the new job what you are applying, that job skill set, you need to highlight your current experience to match with that. That is basically possible when you improve your spoken ability, understanding the interview skill set, whatever earlier we discussed on the various types of eye contact. You have very good experience, excellent projects you work with. Now you deserve for as a project director, but unfortunately, you doesn't have an appropriate body language and you are not looking into the eyes of the people in a confident way. And you may not have people skills. I think you, some of you might have know, not, don't know about the people skills. People skills means what type of persons that you are going to meet. Suppose if I work in India, maybe I'll go for a job interview, there are Indians may interview me. Or same like in Sri Lanka or maybe Pakistan, different countries. Same nationality, there's no problem. But when you work in Middle East and different countries, once you come to the overseas, or cross-cultural communications are different. Various people beliefs, assumptions, myths from each type of nationalities have a different perceptions. That we should know while we are working in the companies. As an example, when I came to Dubai, first time I reported to one of the senior QS from Pakistan. Excellent, knowledgeable person. 
I learned from a lot. Then later I reported to another, one of the senior QS from Kerala. I learned many things from them in the work experience. When I switched my job, switched over my job from contracting from to consultancy, in the first job, I worked in a project eight nationalities. I'm the only one Indian team led by South African. So the cross-cultural communications and the people, how they treat, how they work, these experiences, what we have, we should predict what type of company that you are going to join, what type of management they are. Because an example in Dubai, there are various cost consulting companies. The, they are originated from UK, managing by a professionals from UK. Then you should know what are their expectations. So in the process of learning, until you decide what type of job interview that you are attending. But in the job interviews, what's going to happen here, maybe the right-hand side HR, maybe the central, one of the commercial director, and left-hand side, there's a contracts manager. And now a senior QS job in a good consultancy, maybe that salary of this job is approximately two times than what you are drawing in an example in a small subcontracting company. When you go for this job interview here, first of all, you have to check that, are you ready for that? Make sure you dress appropriately, suitable to the particular type of company. Arrive on good time without going to any tense. Set your body long ways. Set your body long ways always to suit the situation. But you don't know what type of panel that you are coming. But at least you know the type of company. And expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected means, for example, you are always shy about, for example, to see the girls. A women professionals, you may not work because in construction industry in some companies, they don't even recruit, for example, women. And you don't have a habit to see them directly because you have a fear and shy. What is expected? Unexpected commercial director from UK, one of the women, and HR also one woman, and contracts manager also women, and you have a fear to see women, and vice versa in other genders. Then what happens? Automatically, the first impression you will feel little discomfort. Your confidence level will go down. But if you say in your, to your mind, expect the unexpected. That's where how you have to go for job interviews at any time. Let me present myself for the job position. I know the responsibilities. I know the skill set what I have. Now I decided to sell my strengths to suit to the position with the right communication skills. That means right presentation skills. And in the interview, you have to prepare your self-checklist persons. If they conducted the interview first a technical person, maybe 15 minutes, then another line manager who's going to hire you, maybe another 20 minutes, then HR another 15 minutes. So every once the interview completed, then you have to ask them definitely some definite persons. That also you have to present in a nice way. Because during the interview, you understood what the technical requirements, also the job requirements and company policies and procedures. At that time, you should ask them if you have any several questions, you have to ask them without any fear, get it clarified. Generally, there's some tips which we are presenting here. These all presentation slides will come to the all attendees within the one week time. You must and should spend enough time to review your CV. Modify, keep it as a one standard template and make sure that CV should suitably amend to the job positions what you are applying slightly, not entirely. Then start thinking Think what to say. That's what our thinking process comes. There is a principle called design thinking. We design structures for factor of safety. But have you designed your thinking process anytime? For thinking also design required. 
what is the design thinking? Suppose if you go for a job interview, first question they'll ask you, can you please tell me about you? Have you prepared for that? You may have 20 years of experience. You don't know where to start, where to explain, and how to conclude. That's why first fundamental question, do you know clearly how to speak about you to others? Then once you prepare, think what to say and say what you think. Say, think what to say, it may take two days to prepare. Say what you think also requires 10 times practice. One time you make it. One time in the life is sufficient because you're all well-matured adults, well-experienced professionals. Suppose some of the credentials which are not covered under the CV, you should demonstrate it. That's why if you cannot demonstrate your strengths, what you said in the CV, you cannot be saved. No, you will not be selected. Most of all, most of all the candidates, what they do is copy the somebody's CV content, they'll put it. In that you have written one line, effective communication skills. But unfortunately, you are not demonstrating. Then how do they trust your competence levels? That's why when you are preparing, you must and should know that to this job is very royal and dignified job, semi-government organization. Where a client is so popular client. The top, I can say, very good professionals are working in that company. Are you having the business acumen skills? How to, first of all, greeting them with your people skills? And then about ethical standards. Today in the industry, everyone, we should know how to respect others. Respect is one of the high level of standard. Sometime when I meet in the industry, several professionals, even the greetings also, they cannot tell with the right modulation of the tone. We have to recheck what happened to you. Investment of respect is free of cost. And also, once you invest respect, respect will come. That's why we should know how to speak with the different types of professionals. And Middle East, majority of the interviewers, they know about cross-cultural communications. That's why when you're practicing, how to prepare yourself. One time at least to prepare in your life, no onwards. Don't neglect one-time preparation forever, lifetime. And when you present, Maximum time they will give you 10 minutes in the overall interview to speak about you. At any time when it comes, make an eye contact. Don't get fear. Don't put your head down. Don't look at top and left and right. Always you have to engage with them. Don't be disconnect, distract from your things. And make sure anything what you resolved in your life, major key issues what you solved, also, different critical thinking skills, what you have, sell it out and tell to them beyond them what you have written in the CV. And maybe the way you appeared in the, your photograph in your CV, because a digital photograph, sometimes candidates even they don't take. And even civil engineers and construction professionals, they don't like photos also because they feel that oh, we are so frustrated. Why to take your photographs? Even men and women. Yeah. This is quite common. However, we have to see how to take an appropriate, yeah, appropriate one of the digital picture, latest picture in a professional attire. Okay. So presentation skills generally there are two types. One is presenting in front of the paper. That could be like, you know, mass audience, you need to look at what type of, you know, presentation modes, what you take. But here, just like right hand side, what you are looking at, you're a candidate from Dubai, and the panel members, they are doing from where? From KS. At that time, how do you present yourself? So sit in front of the appropriate video cam. You should have latest laptop. Webcam should work. Lighting should come on your face. And also, you should be well-dressed up to the table level. And make sure you should present your things in the appropriate way. So there are various characteristics of a good presenter. Starts with whatever you speak, 
it should be in a concise manner. That means your words are in control. And whatever experience that you are telling, it should be highly authoritative. That means you're knowledgeable. For example, the job position for senior cost manager, who can prepare a cost plan for one of the client in Saudi projects. Maybe your hands-on experience, what you have, can you speak in the interview level? And can you demonstrate your experience relevant to that? Even earlier, you prepared a cost plans for building projects. Now this particular assignment, they are looking for infrastructure projects. What knowledge you have, but is it experience is relevant to infrastructure projects? Or maybe in previous project, you are only handling MEP, but now this job position looking for the entire project cost management. But that, are you confident? Because every human being, whatever we have experience, or whatever skills what we have, suppose you have 75% skill set, but the job position is expecting 100%. Then recruiters were expecting 150%. But your 75% cannot match with at least 100% unless you improve your characteristics of the presentation skills. Then how you can give the first impression? The way you speak. The pitch. The pitch is always, for example, now I am speaking now. I have laptop in front of me. I set my volume up to some extent. Now I can hear what I am speaking. I should observe, I should listen the level of what I speak. If I don't feel comfortable to listen this particular modulation of the pitch, I need to make sure, am I speaking to four people? Or maybe I'm speaking in front of 100 people in a row. But job interviews are mostly closed one, limited audience. Second thing, your pitch or speaking style should be always natural. For example, in my experience in the last 25 years, my first job I worked with Rolls-Royce Industrial Power India Limited. Out of 95 experts, I am the only one Indian working in that power plant project in India. At that time, I was under impression that how I can speak with a British accent. But at one point of time, I realized that why should I go for different accents? Because at that time I was living in India. So the next company, when I moved to another company, if I could have acquired that accent, does it fits to my face? And also the natural accent, what you have, see that how other people are comfortable with that. Rather, if you start creating, since tomorrow the job interview is an American company, if you want to speak like an American, or a British company if you want to speak like a British, or Arabic company if you want to speak like an Arabic, it won't suit to us. That's why be natural always, but be clear. So speed of speaking. Here I want to stress a lot when you want to improve the presentation skills. Especially non-native speakers, we are having, especially Asian country and also the Arabic nationalist practitioners, we have a tendency to speak English fast. That was a false impression we created in our career. If you speak fast English, your colleagues, your friends, your relatives feel that, wow, this guy is speaking very fast English. He had a very good fluency. But unfortunately, your accuracy, have you observed it? And what is the necessity or what is the constitution is telling to speak fast? And when you speak slow, you can control the both fluency and also accuracy. That's why fluency and accuracy is something like a fulcrum. If you want to speak very fast, fluency is very high and accuracy is very low. You cannot concentrate and write words what you speak. If you can balance these two, then clarity can improve and you can speak concise way what you want to speak. Then while speaking, Necessary pauses are required. Necessary pauses means no need to speak continuously and no country or nowhere it's said. You should speak whatever the reasonable speed you require and also make one small pause. Pause means, suppose 
interviewer asked you a question to you and when you are presenting about your experience you decided to speak about your current experience so current experience 80% you have to concentrate the past experience 20% is sufficient so once you explain current experience you can say at the last sentence at that moment that's all about my current experience dear panel then put just stop then start again from there let me explain briefly about my past experience also let me explain from the past you need to bring it out that creates the first impression to the any interviewer and apart from that your voice your tone because everyone is unique my voice and your voice will not match because everyone is unique then you should see that talk to your colleagues talk to your family friends also friends professionals mentors check how is your voice modulation is your voice modulation is having any set of i can say dry some people speak very like a without having any i can say metallic type of a voice their voice will come very strong even if they say good morning also it looks like scolding us good morning i mean maybe the person has like that maybe another person have very low voice good morning if a manager comes with the, that first tone by saying very big another manager comes with small tone good morning instead of that why don't you go with the balanced approach good morning to all how are you guys you need to raise a high level of volume and also in the industry if you raise the volume that automatically you are angry that's why during conversation sometime we discuss hey 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 why you raising the voice come on come on i'm pressing please we say like that the reason because in the interviews we have to make sure the speech speed pause and volume you should control that creates the first impression in the beginning the moment whether through video interviews or through the uh, live interviews when you shake the hands the way you speak the first words and also the way you create first impression that nails the interview more that's why you never get a second chance to create a good first impression except when you got married that's a different scenario jobs it will work and the last about body language because many of the people have a misconception that whatever we speak is only presentation skills sorry guys you are going with your body you are going with your head this is a very important area and also these two hands what we make which clearly gives the right impression to the other persons number one eye contact eye contact also we should not look at like you know very random way like this also you should not look at only one person you like because he looks like soft but you are not looking at other persons that's also not good to maintain eye contact in an interview panel for example you started speaking about yourself then start speaking first general audience with three people good morning to all my name is ramesh palkila and basically i am a civil engineer I have hands on experience more than 30 years in the industry suppose i started speaking with one car one person then second segment which i want to speak about my experience then i will switch over my eye contact to the second person when i am looking at second person doesn't mean that i am not ignoring the first person rather i am not ignoring the third person that's what how you require to distribute your eye contact in a reasonable way and also when they started questioning you look at that person first answer to him it will be a short answer it was a big explanation start with him again explain to the total team and again come back and stop with the same person where you are closing the answer then hand gestures are very important you should not close or you should not keep your hands like a loose you require a gentle hand gestures are important okay and then about your postures the way you sit in the chair that clearly implies reflect it gives an image to the other persons 
at what style that you are sitting. For example, if you sit very straight like this, that also gives a different audience posture. Or if you sit like this, that makes a bit of arrogance nature. Or if you sit completely like this, submissive nature, your body is speaking. Your body is presenting. Are you observing your body? And what about your expressions? Majority of you don't know how you express your facial expressions. That's why you all have to record at least 5 to 10 minutes in your computer. Before the interviews, try to record and see that how you are presenting. Knowingly or unknowingly, some of you may have mannerisms. Mannerisms means by nature of you habitated to this. As an example, while speaking, you have a habit to always make like this. Or maybe you have a habit to make like this. Or maybe you have a habit like this. As you know, as you know. But you don't know what you are doing. Suppose you don't have such habits, but at least see on facial expressions. Some candidates have a winking nature like this. Anything what they speak, they make. Even they can see on their forehead wrinkles also, like, you know, very congested way, very distracted way. So you doesn't know what you are expressing. But do you know what expressions you have? Have you watched it? Have you identified? That's why sometimes our videos, when we watch sometime, we'll see and we'll get funny things, right? That's why we should not become a fool in front of the people. Your body is presenting a lot than your voice. That's why in interviews, it's not an examination at all, any time. Conversation. Your conversation ability with your best smile possible. Also, listening skills are very important. For all this, you all have to prepare. Without preparation for the important jobs, you may not experience all these type of points. That's why the tips for all other interviews I explained, but especially for video interviews, one of the important thing is about lighting. Lighting is very important. It should come on your face front, not on the back side. And check your surroundings when you are attending any important meeting. Make sure you should not get any distractions. And make sure your voice, for example, you're all listening my voice. If suppose if the system is giving echo to you, Echo means resound. You will not be comfortable. That's why in the beginning of the any video interviews, you have to check with the panel who's conducting the interview. Is it my audio and video? Is everything is clear to you? Recheck that is your judaisms. And dress part at least you have to make sure. By chance, if you don't wear the pant, don't you know stand immediately because that looks very awkward. Maintain good eye contact even through the camps also. And sometime do, do, do a conduct some of the test run, how your internet is working. And everyone can take a tip to attend any video interviews, you require a minimum 20 Mbps speed. In browser, you can type and check your internet speed, fast.com. F-A-S-T fast.com. When you type in the browser, it will check the internet speed, what you have Wi-Fi at your home. Minimum 20 Mbps speed. If you don't have, don't be confused. Have sufficient internet speed. Good system, good webcam, and best audio is required. And once you prepare well, for every job interview through the webcams or the etc., minimum 5 to 10 minutes before, it should be available. And you have to see the clarity of what you are speaking in the entire speech. The moment once you are concluding of any concept or any question, and end on a positive note. Even the interviewer, they grill you and they said you don't have this experience, you don't have that experience. Don't let down yourself even one minute. Your aspiration is to get into the job. Until the last second, we need to fight. We need to demonstrate. We need to make sure to get into the clear line. That's why everyone, we have to work on how to improve speaking skills in your own native language. Plus, being English is one of the international languages. We have to see 
And today the world is moving towards the industry revolution 5.0 that is called artificial intelligence, AI technologies. So artificial intelligence is always artificial intelligence. Who prepared the artificial intelligence? A human being like you, like me. That is called natural intelligence. This natural intelligence plus artificial intelligence is equal to enhanced intelligence. Thus, that enhanced intelligence, how you can develop, this all depends on how smart you are. That's why your working environment, job environment, if it is not providing you any enhanced skills in your career, don't blame them. Find out a way how you can improve your skills and go and speak to the industry with your effective business and as well as you know, appropriate presentation skills. For that, you required a, a, an immediate requirement of effective speaking skills. That's why in the industry, majority of candidates, they are highly successful in their career, but sometimes they have a fear to speak in front of the people. As an example, almost one and a half hour, I'm speaking continuously. That ability, it doesn't come in one day. Almost from last 20 years, I'm speaking. Speaking is my passion. But the day 20 years back when I'm speaking to now, I understand several aspects of my mistakes. As an example, 20 years back, I speak very fast. But I realized that this requirement is not required. And you know, one of the important thing, when you speak slow, the others can understand easily. And always it looks like that you are like such a decent diplomatic person that gives the right impression. Second thing, because you're speaking slow, it helps you, it helps you to speak long time as well. This secret nobody knows. When I mentored one of the uh, very young dynamic girl from Egypt, what I mentored is, don't speak fast. Not required. No country asks you to speak fast. Speak sometime just to you know, impress the people. But that should not give any influence to the required. And also the monotonous tone is not very important. The way I am speaking with all of you with a different varying the tone, that makes, that makes all of you to listen to me carefully. That is called influencing the people. That influence means convincing the people to listen to you. That's why you have to improve your appropriate vocabulary. What are the rich, professional, business management, technical, financial, commercial, legal, all this business management long ways once you learn, suitably as and when required, you should speak with such words. And every words what we write, and what we speak, it has its own influence. I provided some tips here. And nothing wrong to learn every day at least two to three new words. That can enhance, that can improvise, which can also have certain impact on your professional business communication skills. Also, second concept from tomorrow onwards, if you want to develop your effective presentation skills, stop thinking in your native language. Start think in English and speak in English. For example, my mother tongue is Telugu. Now I'm speaking in front of you, but I'm not thinking in that long ways. I can, but I'm not thinking because I need to make my fluency with you. And also I need to make sure to use the right words, the two simple words where everybody can understand. That's the reason you all have to start one principle from today onwards. Think in English and speak in English. And also think what to say and say what you think. That's it. Your life is over. That's the best presentation skills. And also try to deliver anything. The way your enunciation, the way you speak. Pronunciation is basically how do you speak. Enunciation is how you are speaking. Rate of speech. Why fast? Why very slow? See your voice modulation. Voice modulation, sometimes when you go to the offices, you might have observed some bosses will speak very authoritative way. Nowadays, the world is changing. Treat a team, every colleague as your team member. And make sure when you are speaking, maintain some pauses. Pause is something like a, when you are driving a vehicle, speed breaker is coming. You are not stopping. 
you're slowly stopping and again you're picking from there that's what how you have to develop your communication and presentation skills that's why when you start speak you can develop your speaking skills once you start presenting you can present your presentation skills that's why at these points what i mentioned here these presentation slides will come to you and try to record your voice one time and listening that means over the phone how you are speaking for example, every human being varies the tone based on the requirement. For example, if I got a, any unknown call, which was not saved in my mobile, my voice is different. The moment I receive, I'll say, uh, Ramesh speaking here. Suppose if I know one known person called me, my staff, or maybe my known uh, professional friend, my voice of tone will be different. I can say, hi, Suresh, how are you? What's up? What's going on? That's what we have to see that your voice modulation and also you have to sometimes speak over a long time over the phone, important area, when you cannot have a Zoom meeting. At that time, we should also see what to speak. You don't know other person how they are listening. That's why you have to make sure you have to speak clearly, conciseness. That's why there are seven C principles. Anything what you speak, it should be with the correctness. Also, courtesy is important, the respect, clarity, concreteness. That means whatever the words you speak, that should have a solid meaning in the discussion. For example, you are a contracts manager, you went for a client meeting. The way you speak that time clearly, dear client, these delays are caused by you and by us. It's called concurrent delays. Or these delays are caused by us, is our culpable delays by us. In this scenario, we'll apply for extension of time for completion plus associated prolongation past months. Such a solid, concrete words related to the technical, contractual, financial, legal, business management long ways. When you acquire, you are the one of the best professional to give a first impression. Plus, consideration is very important. If you are a senior management professional, you are meeting a junior man, junior uh, professional. Make sure they may not understand your long ways. Fine tune, explain what is necessary to them. Finally, completeness. Whatever you speak, that should have a complete information as we said with that. That's why the practical tips finally when you go for final job interviews, listening skills. Listen carefully. Let other person finish this question, then only speak. Then observe your non-verbal communications. Observe yourself. It's very important. Observe others. Then being clear what you are speaking. Being concise. Anything which you want to speak more than two minutes, start, explain, conclude. That is a strategy like a curve. And being confident. And also being personable when you want to highlight about your requirements in the interviews. The last one is be patient. Enough. Because in the world, patience is one of the high level. With that, I would like to do a small demo now. And I know the team who are attending the professionals, almost like more than 50. I know you have sometimes some fear to appear in front of the people. But don't get worried. 